Hey guys, it's Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, Basic Sorgatronomics. Check out everything at Sorgatron.com. Sign up for the newsletter, etc. And uh, I said, usually we talk about video production. We talk about social media on this show. And uh, kind of uh, broadly, I kind of want to talk about content today. And uh, and, and I noticed this a lot with uh, a lot of people that I follow. And uh, tonight I was actually uh, working on a, a bit of a DVD, digital download, whatever project. Um, there's a, a fellow uh, right now named Dalton Castle that's uh, doing some wrestling, uh, getting getting a pretty big name on television, on Ring of Honor television. If you have that in your area, you can find it online. And uh, he's a guy that's been with us with uh, International Wrestling Cartel, one of the groups that I do some video production for, uh, for a good bit. And, uh, you know, kind of we want to kind of strike while the iron is hot on, on this one. And we have a lot of great library footage of him since 2011 uh, wrestling like some pretty great people in the industry uh, over the years. And, and again, just kind of uh, making making good on that. And that's one of the things I look at when we're looking at like, uh, um, you know, the, the promotions that I work with. They have some great libraries. And, and it's really important to kind of look at that and see, okay, you're making good new shows. You're getting people in that, into that and wanting to buy your Cage Furies and your Fall Free For Alls and whatever new shows came out this year. Uh, but also looking back, how can we expose new fans to old content that we have? WWE Network, for instance, is really doing this to a large effect when you talk about, uh, you know, you can go watch all the pay-per-views and there's everybody spending $9.99 on it and you have the new pay-per-views. You get to supplement all this old material. When you're a content creator, again, you know, we're looking at, okay, you know, this guy's doing some great stuff here. We have all this for these great matches. Let's reintroduce it to newer fans that maybe didn't get to see them all the time or, oh, you know, maybe they're introduced to them and now we can introduce them to the International Wrestling Cartel via this person. We actually do that to a great effect for several years. It's been a, a, a DVD project that we sell on India Wrestling US, um, that actually preceded me from the guy that held everything before me uh, with IWC uh, for CM Punk, and everybody knows CM Punk uh, was very big on top for several years, and uh, some of his growing times were with here in Pittsburgh with IWC. And again, you know, there's going to be more CM Punks. There's going to be more people that have come across, come in our doors, and they're going to end up on NXT, WWE, TNA, whatever the case may be. And um, and 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 the smart thing is to capitalize on something like that. Now, this also applies if you're a podcaster, blogger, etc. A lot of the, especially the ones that talk about social media, talk about content, talk about uh, uh, kind of how you can create and, and, and put yourself out there, uh, th- you're seeing them do different things with their content. Um, for instance, and maybe, you know, it's a little bit of a time crunch for me. I'm always creating new things here four days a week. Um, when we create our podcast, I try to make content out of that as much as I can, as much as it makes sense. Uh, when we talk about our awesome cast and wrestling mayhem show, I'm going in and trying to, um, take those clips we're making this big long thing that doesn't fit for every format so let's take little clips of the the parts where chill is talking about this phone he just got for instance and that goes out there and that gets a, a lot of activity and that's what's helping us in our numbers on youtube for for both of those shows or maybe you take that information if it's it's you know something that you can transfer into a slideshow um and gary vanderchuk again somebody i follow a lot now he's got a team behind him so that makes it a little more interesting he's taken big and he's taking ideas and he's making these mini videos out of it with the graphics on them and everything like that. Hey, for the most part, I'm just one dude, you know, uh, but we're trying to actually uh, grow the team a little bit and, and be smart with our time with this kind of thing and, and figure out different ways to do this. Um, with my clients, uh, again, you know, I work with uh, some people in healthcare for the most part, and we have some other ones, um, you know, we're, we're kind of signing up and working with. And even a video project, I talked about kind of reformatting some stuff for di- some different ideas for their marketing marketing efforts. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, we're, whereas we, we are making new content every week, we can still look back at the content that's not that timely. Now, when we're talking about Wrestling Man Show Awesome Cast, um, we're talking about what's happening that week in technology news and professional wrestling news. So there's not much reason to go back. But in that case, like, so we've been doing, we've done 88 episodes of Indie Mayhem Show. We've done, I, I haven't even numbered the episodes for Awesome Chat. And these are regular interviews. And typically not around an event, really kind of generally about, hey, what's going on with you in wrestling and technology and, you know, what's going on. 
something that will be just as listenable six months down the line as you know as it was the first day. Now, there's bits afterwards where we talk about more current events, but that's kind of a throwaway part. You're there for the interview anyways. And now those are things that we're going into Twitter and and letting people know, hey, look, we talked to DJ Z Ion from TNA back in what, February or whatever it might have been, and, and, and introducing new people for that. And he gets tagged, it gets shared out, and we're seeing the numbers spike. We're seeing a lot of activity on our Twitter because of that. Instead of just saying, hey, this is what we did this week. I, don't even, I know you don't know who this guy is. Maybe nothing's really hitting with you, but here's something you know that can, that can prop that up. When we're looking again at our healthcare clients, we have so many blogs and, and great videos, informational videos, that again, not time relevant, we can go back in there and say, hey, let's bring up this video when we're talking about um, uh, comfort zones and and keep that in rotation so new people will come across it. It's always going to be new to somebody, right? And uh, and I think I think that's uh, that will help you to if you're putting your thing out there, if you're helping with the content marketing kind of side of things, um, you're it'll take a little bit of the pressure off of you to want to create mass amounts of content right off the bat. Now you have to create something. You have to have a regular basis. You need to create that catalog. Sure. But in the meantime, look back, especially after a while, we've been doing this podcast for, uh, I just got a thing for a, a two, like a time hop for two years ago, we were doing a podcast for this one client. And it's like, man, I need to look back there. You know, I need to see it, what all stuff we've talked to, talked about. It's up on YouTube and everything, but how do we rise that a little more to the top? Same with blogs, same with uh, nutritional blogs that we're doing. Um, and does that fit for you? It depends on what you're doing. Again, if you're more of a news kind of website, uh, you're not going to do that. But that's what's really nice. Again, we have these interviews on top of the news. We have an interview version of the show that we can bring up, you know, uh, from time to time and kind of write, rise people and, and, and bring, hopefully bring new people to our regular content that we're doing week to week. Um, this stuff, a lot of the conversations we have on here, I'm sure I can look back a year ago uh, before it was even called basic sorgonomics probably and, and find subjects like, Oh yeah, I remember talking about that. Uh, and let's rise that to the top and let's uh, see if there's anything new we can add to that conversation. So uh, we called it <laughs> we call it regurgitating con content sometimes. At least in my conversations with my SEO buddy, uh, uh, when I was talking about um, you know some strategies when it came to uh, you know uh, SEO and, and and dealing with sor those sorts of things. It, it sounds like such a gross word when it when it comes to that, but it works. You know, it, you have this catalog. You, you need to uh, stop just looking forward to the next content you're making and just look back and say, okay, what do we have here? You know, and kind of assess things. So if you've been making stuff for a while, I guess that's my challenge here for today is to kind of, again, look back on that content. What can you rise back to the top? What can you even look at and, um, and kind of update, right? Uh, for instance, we, uh, we work on some content for, uh, InsertCoinToBegin.com, which is a video game site that I'm helping my friends with. And the idea came up. It's like, well, hey, let's do a Call of Duty guide. Yeah, but the new Call of Duty is coming out soon. It's like, that's fine. Do it with the one you have now. How much are those strategies really going to change from one version to the next? You go back through your guide and you update the bits that are going to be different for the new game. You don't have to rewrite the entire book. How do you think it? How do you think they do when you you do the? Um, this is how you use Windows 8. This is how you use Windows 10. You change the bits that are different, and uh, and, and and not not everything across the board and start from scratch in cases like that. I think in most cases like that, maybe Windows was a bad example for that. But even going from like a Final Cut uh, uh, X 10 point. O to a 10.1, you know, you don't rewrite the entire book. You just update the things that are different from the one version to the next or a Final Cut or a, a, a Photoshop 7 to 8 or something like that. But let me know what you think. Uh, Sorgatron.com, please sign up for the newsletter. We got one coming out this week. Updates and please check out the uh, information for the Lunch and Learn. We're doing nuts and bolts. You can join us in person if you're in the Pittsburgh area. It's up in the Allentown neighborhood up there, uh, right down from Mount Washington, actually. Don't ride the ridge, baby. And, uh, and we also have remote options available. We're going to be talking about microphones. We're going to be talking about technology behind the podcast. 
uh, the physical technology, the things you need to get and hook up to your computer uh, more than anything to demystify that to make it easier for you to get started with this thing. Let me know what you think about all this stuff. Uh, comments on this at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And we will see you guys next time on Basic Sorgonomics. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.